Hello everyone and welcome to this month's Technical Assistant Webinar. My name is Katerina Smiley and I am a Digital Equity Advisor for NCIA's Digital Equity Grant Programs. I'm joined by my colleagues, Knowledge Belt Hudson, who is also a Digital Equity Advisor, as well as Rochelle Crotty, who is the Technical Assistant Advisor for the Digital Equity Grant Programs. For today's agenda, we will review digital equity as a concept and practice, provide an update on the status of the digital equity grant programs, as well as review helpful technical assistance materials that will help guide grantees in their planning process. After the presentation, we will close with a Q&A. Before we begin, let's take a look at how we here at NTIA define equity. This definition comes from the White House's Executive Order on Advancing Racial Equity and Support for Underserved Communities through the Federal Government. When we refer to equity, we are referring to the consistent and systemic fair, just, and impartial treatment of all individuals, including those belonging to communities who have been historically marginalized, such as communities of color, indigenous and Native American persons, those belonging to religious minority groups, the LGBTQ plus community, persons living in rural areas, and those who are adversely impacted by persistent poverty and in inequality. Equitable internet access for these underserved communities is not only essential to fulfilling NCIA's mission of achieving internet for all, but it will ultimately assist in leveling the playing field to ensure that they have the opportunity to participate in all aspects of economic, social, and civic life. Those of us here on the digital equity team are working hard to ensure that our grant programs are diverse and representative of the communities we serve. Great effort is being put into ensuring our engagements on every level are culturally appropriate and inclusive so that folks have a sense of belonging in terms of participating in society as a digital citizen. We are also working to ensure that there is equity both within our internal and external systems as well. While doing so, it is important to remember that the, the process of practicing equity is ongoing requiring us to identify and overcome intentional and unintentional barriers arising from bias or systemic structures, which leads us into more just conditions. As a result of this practice, our goal is to achieve digital equity, which is best defined as the condition in which individuals and communities have the capacity that is necessary for full participation in the society and economy of the United States. Achieving digital equity is vital because it helps us to close the digital divide, which is the gap between those who have access to technology and those who do not. And this is not an easy task. Think of our pursuit of digital equity as a long winding road. The green exit signs represent the various areas we'll have to visit in order to get there. Visiting all of these areas will be vital and because this journey is iterative, we may have to revisit certain areas as often as needed to overcome barriers and inequities caused by the digital divide. And this is important because digital inequity disproportionately impacts our stakeholders. Digital equity being the end result is crucial because it affects all Americans, regardless of their background or location. If we take a look at our digital equity cover populations, as well as our bead underrepresented communities, we can see the intersectionality or overlap between the two groups. The question then becomes, how can our work with digital equity help to alleviate any existing disparities that folks in these groups encounter on a regular basis? To answer this question, we have to view digital equity from a public health perspective. There is increasing evidence that demonstrates a strong correlation between broadband access, internet adoption, and health outcomes. Having the access and skills needed to utilize the internet will ultimately have an impact on multiple health determinants. The social determinants are health are the non-medical conditions in the environment where people are born, live, learn, work, play, and worship, as well as age that influence other health outcomes. The number of determinants varies depending on who you ask, but essentially they are comprised of five domains, healthcare access and quality, neighborhood and built environment, 
social and community context, economic stability, and education access and quality. In today's world, access to the internet impacts all of these areas. For example, in Hamilton County Schools in Chattanooga, Tennessee, they are offering an initiative to bridge the digital divide by providing home Wi-Fi to every family that qualifies until the year of 2030, absolutely free of charge. Shortly after the program was enacted, improvements in academic achievements were seen between all students across the board, proving that an increase in digital access leads to an increase in educational quality. Similar results can also be found in terms of economic stability, which has a positive impact on all other social and health determinants. For instance, achieving digital equity for folks living in rural areas means that they will be able to access online jobs in addition to helping small business owners and entrepreneurs adopt new technology, like the farmers in Texas Rio Grande Valley who are advancing their businesses with new smart agricultural technologies. So again, when practicing equity in this work, a good thing to keep in mind is how does digital equity or the lack thereof influence the outcomes associated with each domain? And how does that impact those in our covered populations and underserved community? I will now turn it over to my colleague, Knowledge Bill Hudson, to provide an update on the Digital Equity Act programs. Thank you. Thanks, Kat, for that refresher on digital equity and its importance. There's been a lot of movement on the Digital Equity Act programs as of late, with states and territories beginning with their digital equity planning efforts. As many of you may know, the Digital Equity Act is a part of a portfolio of programs administered by NTIA that focus on access, affordability, and adoption of high-speed internet. Today, we will be focusing on the Digital Equity Act programs. The Digital Equity Act creates three programs that provide funding to promote digital inclusion and advance equity for all. These programs are the State Digital Equity Planning Grant Program, the State Digital Equity Capacity Grant Program, and the State Digital Equity Competitive Grant Program. States must develop digital equity plans to be eligible for state capacity grants. Capacity grant funding can be used to implement digital equity plans and related activities. All 50 states, DC and Puerto Rico have been awarded their digital equity planning grants and their planning efforts are underway. All other US territories have submitted their planning grant applications for review by NTIA. As previously mentioned, we are in the planning phase of the program. These programs are sequential. This is so that entities can take the time to meaningfully engage with stakeholders and develop a plan thoroughly and intentionally before moving into execution. I'll now hand it over to my colleague, Rochelle, to give insight into the digital equity plan requirements and the resources NTIA has available to support planning efforts. Thank you, Knowledge Build. Uh, my name is Rochelle Crotty, and I'm on the technical assistance team here at NTIA, and I'm going to uh, walk you through the next part of our webinar, which will cover how to leverage our technical assistance resources for digital equity. As part of the state digital equity planning grant program, each state participating will have to write a plan that meets several required components, including one, the identification of the barriers to digital equity faced by the covered populations, Two, measurable objectives for documenting and promoting broadband technology, the online accessibility and inclusivity of public resources and services, digital literacy, secure online privacy and cybersecurity, and consumer devices and tech support. Three, an assessment of how the objectives will impact and interact with the state's economic and workforce goals, the health, education, civic, and social engagement outcomes, and the delivery of other essential services. Four, a description of how the state plans to collaborate with key stakeholders to achieve objectives. Five, a list of organizations with which the administering entity collaborated in developing and implementing the plan. Six, a stated vision for digital equity. Seven, a digital equity needs assessment, including an assessment of the baseline and the state's identification of the barriers to digital equity. 
Eight, an asset inventory, including resources and strategies that promote digital equity and existing digital equity plans and programs. Nine, a coordination and outreach strategy, including opportunities for public comment, collaboration, and ongoing engagement with the covered populations and the full range of stakeholders. 10, a description of how municipal, regional, and tribal digital equity plans will be incorporated. 11, an implementation strategy that establishes is measurable goals, objectives, proposed activities that sets out measures ensuring the plan's sustainability and that adopts mechanisms to ensure that the plan is regularly evaluated and updated. 12, an explanation of how the strategy addresses gaps in existing efforts. 13, a description of how the state intends to accomplish the implementation strategy by partnering with workforce organizations, community-based organizations, and institutions of higher learning. 14, a timeline for implementation, and 15, material indicating how the state will coordinate its use of digital equity capacity grant funding and the broadband equity access and deployment funding. Subsequently, we have developed quite a few technical assistance resources to help you achieve all of these requirements. Each of these resources are intended to be used together and are helpful to specific plan requirements. Additionally, everyone can use these resources. All grantees and their stakeholders are welcome to use all of these resources. We have divided our technical assistance resources into two groups. We'll start with the technical assistance resources that are designed to help anyone write a digital equity plan and get started with digital equity. And our second group of resources are designed to help meet the specific requirements for the digital equity plans of this grant program. First up, we have the Digital Equity Best Practices resource. This was our most requested resource. The Digital Equity Best Practices compiles examples from digital inclusion activities across the country and aligns the examples to each of the digital equity plan requirements. The examples that we put together in this resource were not created with our grant program requirements in mind, but they do provide examples of best practices. As you can see here, there are a number of vision statements from a county and various cities across the country. Our next resource is the Digital Equity Guide for States that provides an overview of the grant program and the basics of digital equity, including important definitions and recommendations for weaving digital equity throughout all state-led broadband activities. For example, including how to be intentional with language, how to center the voices of covered populations in historically disconnected communities. This resource can be particularly valuable for new staff at broadband offices or those new to digital equity work. Our next resource is the Digital Equity Plan Guidance. This document takes the reader step-by-step -step through each plan requirement, providing expanded detail on how state broadband offices can comprehensively meet each requirement. As you can see here, we have our Introduction and Vision for Digital Equity section that walks through the relevant requirements from the NOFO and some additional guidance to help guide states through how to write uh, their Introduction and Vision statements. To accompany the digital equity plan guidance, we also have the digital equity plan template. This template is an optional resource that enables state broadband offices to use a preset format to build out the state digital equity plan. This is a true template, so it has a lot of blank space for you to drop each component of your plan into each section. This is our next group of technical assistance resources. Uh, these have been mapped to each of the plan requirements that they are intended to support. We have on this slide our stakeholder engagement and local coordination resources. First up, we have our local coordination one pager. This is a resource on conducting local coordination, including guidance on creating accessible meetings, how to conduct effective community engagement, and a digital inclusion coalition guidebook discussing keys to successful coalition operations. It provides a series of links to external resources. Next step, we have our local coordination interview guides for state broadband offices. This includes example agendas, targeted outcomes, and best practices for meeting with stakeholders during the planning phase. These guides are organized by the stakeholder groups and include uh, groups such as community-based organizations, uh, tribal organizations and entities, as well as ISPs, internet service providers. Next up, we have our local coordination tracker. 
This is an Excel spreadsheet that tracks stakeholders' activities and local plans, and this is an optional resource for you to track your uh, stakeholder engagement throughout the entirety of the planning grant process. Next up, we have our digital equity plan development strategies, and this includes our needs assessment guide. It's a resource that details how to structure a needs assessment, as well as examples from ex existing needs assessment from across the country. A number of uh, organizations have done needs assessments from local cities to counties and even at the state level, and we've compiled these examples in this resource. Next up, we have our asset mapping guide. This provides practical guidelines designed to support asset mapping efforts by digital equity practitioners within the state broadband offices. Both of these resources, the needs assessment guide and the asset mapping guide, are intended to work together to establish the existing digital equity ecosystem within your state in order to best identify the barriers and the existing resources uh, for digital equity. On this slide, we have one of our uh, resources that is currently in development and will be coming soon for your use. This is our equity outcomes for state broadband office. This was a resource that will connect digital inclusion activities with their impacts on health, civic participation, employment, education, and essential services. Our BDE alignment guide is a great resource for providing guidance on how to align the requirements and coordinate the activities across the two grant programs. The guide provides the following purposes and resources. It supports el eligible entities in receiving initial planning funds for BEAD and DE, provides a review of the requirements for each program and how to create plans that meet both requirements, assists eligible entities in aligning efforts across programs, provides an overview of the programs, provides general guidance, requirements, and funding uses, and explains the importance of digital equity. This is a really useful guide um, as many of the requirements for the BEAD five-year action plan and the digital equity plan are actually very much in alignment already, but that might not be immediately apparent until you access this guide and work through how you can align your plans. Next up, we have how to find technical assistance materials on Broadband USA. All of our existing and future TA materials can be found at the link provided on the page. If you scroll down, you'll see our digital equity program description and all of the links to our technical assistance resources. When you click on the link provided, uh, you can see items such as frequently asked questions, our templates, toolkits, local coordination resource, and all of the general technical assistance resources on this page. Additionally, this page also provides links to the Digital Equity Planning Grant NOFO, program application guidance, and key dates for applicants. One of our most important resources, which you might be aware of since you are attending this webinar, is our existing and future webinars that can be found on the past events section of the Broadband USA website. This allows users to filter by topic and engagement so you can find all of our webinars that might be of particular interest to you. We wanted to preview some of our upcoming technical assistance, particularly for the semi-annual report. These resources will be available to grantees only, but as states are required to submit their digital equity plan semi-annual reports on April 30th, we wanted to preview how we're going to support states in this process. We are going to provide a digital equity semi-annual report sample, a digital equity semi-annual report instructional video, and digital equity semi-annual report office hours. These resources, again, are available to grantees only, and we hope to be able to support our grantees in submitting their semi-annual reports. Another one of our important uh, resources for our grantees and for stakeholders is the Digital Equity Act Population Viewer. This map viewer depicts the data used in the funding allocation formula and shows the percentage of the population that falls into at least one of the eight covered population categories by state as defined by the Digital Equity Act of 2021. The next iteration of the Digital Equity Act population viewer will have data at the local level as we gather more granular level data. Our last resource that we'll share with you today is our Internet for All map. 
This clickable map provides information for all of the states and territories participating in the Digital Equity and the Broadband Equity Access and Deployment Grant Programs. As you can see here, when you click on a state in the map, it will show you the program status, as well as when you click on more details, it will show you a new page with population metrics and the contact information for both the federal program officer here at NTIA, as well as contact information for the state broadband office. Thank you so much for attending this webinar. And at this time, we're going to move to our moderated uh, question and answer portion. Thank you. All right, hello everyone. Good afternoon, or I think good morning in some cases. We appreciate you joining today and for uh, making it to the Q&A. So I wanna thank and introduce again my, my colleagues here, Knowledge Build, Kat and uh, Rochelle. And so we have plenty of time to get to some of your questions here, um, but I'll start off with the easy one. And the one that's most popular is uh, where are the slides and where can I watch this recording later on when we get nitty gritty details of the Q&A? Um, so I did put the slides in the chat a couple of times. I'll put it in there a couple of times more before uh, we wrap up here today. So I believe that that version does have clickable links. I was able to click, but if you're having any technical issues or, or cannot click the links within the uh, PowerPoint, I mean, the, the PDF file, um, let us know and we're happy to help. Um, also, the recording uh, that will be posted about 48 hours from now. So check Monday or sorry, Friday afternoon um, on the Broadband USA website. Um, if you toggle over to uh, events and past events, it'll be there. I put the link um, in the chat as well, but that's another one that I'll go and um, post again uh, for you all to have access to. Alrighty, so let's begin. Um, so the first question I'm seeing here is uh, probably one more so for cats. Uh, it says, my state seems opposed to equity or using the word equity. And how do you recommend that we discuss equity or, or use the term in our state? Um, that's a really great question. So uh, my suggestion would be to sort of uh, frame those terms in a language that is more valuable um, to your specific state or audience um, in order to sort of speak to more so their needs and goals. So for example, um, we've heard digital equity be referred to um, as a numerous amount of things such as technology advancement, digital opportunity, digital empowerment, cyber equity, um, etc. Um, regardless of the terminology you choose to use, just it's important to emphasize that achieving digital equity is important because it does help to ensure that everyone has better health, education, employment, and life outcomes as a result of digital access and skills. Sorry, I forgot about the mute button there. Um, and I don't think I even uh, covered, thank you, Kat, by the way, um, uh, submitting questions. I think I, I mentioned it in the chat, but if you have questions for us, uh, feel free to use the Q&A box on your Zoom module. It should be at the bottom of your screen. You can just type in a question and submit it there. And that goes to our folks who are working uh, behind the curtain to uh, get them over to me and, and my panelists here. So with that, we'll go on to the next question here. So I think I might hop over to Rochelle this time, um, asking about, um, there was a specific question about whether states can reallocate funds, uh, modify project narratives or budgets. Yes, of course. Um, this is a bit of a tricky question, though. So you want to have a conversation with both the federal program officer for your state and your NIST grant specialist. Um, you want to make sure everybody's having the same conversation and connecting on all the appropriate areas um, and different uh, changes require different solutions. Uh, so they'll be your best resource to work through those. Great. Always love the grant specific questions. Uh, those are great. Uh, next, I'll hop over to knowledge build. And this is always a popular question. Do we know when the competitive no NOFO or the notice of funding opportunity will be released? So um, we don't have a fixed date for the release of the um, competitive NOFO or notice of funding um, opportunity. 
However, we do anticipate the no for early next year. So we're just asking for, right now we're asking for requests for comments for the capacity and the competitive grants, or we'll be doing that shortly. It's not happening right this very minute. We'll be doing it very shortly, so. Yeah, and uh, so, you know, to watch for, for that information to come out, usually uh, we recommend folks uh, find us on our, uh, follow us, uh, Broadband USA, um, we have a, a newsletter that goes out once a month, and we also release uh, press releases and um, extra news on the grants that you can find. I'll drop the link to how to sign up for our Broadband USA mailing list. Um, that's probably the best way because you get it directly into your inbox, but also just keep a lookout on our Broadband USA website and um, ntia.gov. Um, as soon as information goes out about the request for comments that Knowledge Bill talked about or, um, you know, about the NOFO when it finally does make an appearance, um, those will the will be the places where you'll find that information first. Um, all right, so let's hop over to Kat. Um, so knowing the importance of broadband access coupled with digital literacy, especially in the realm of digital health literacy, um, how will this work support digital literacy and help digital literacy, especially since COVID has propelled telehealth and digital health even more, it's become more of a big deal um, over the past three years or so. Okay, wow, a lot of great questions today. So um, to answer that, I would say that that will have to be determined by each state as well as their stakeholder communities. Um, so we are encouraging states to engage with healthcare experts at the local community and state level to um, sort of understand one, how to have healthcare experts um, include digital skills training and technology into their programs, and two, identify you know the gaps and possible solutions to some of the uh, healthcare disparities that we're seeing in these communities. Great. All right. Um, I know there was a question about um, somebody wanted to to follow up with specific presenters here. Um, I know our uh, general email, you know, if you have any questions about any of our programs, we have our very general internet for all at ntia.gov email address where you can send questions to. If you have questions specifically about digital equity, um, we have digital equity at ntia.gov. So, um, you know, once you send questions there, um, that gets filtered to um, the, the appropriate staff throughout our, our NTIA uh, Office of Internet Connectivity and Growth Network. But I'll leave it up to my panelists here <laughs> whether they want to put their, their email email specifically in the chat, but just know that we have those general inboxes and that um, things get filtered to the right people there. So those are usually the easiest emails to remember. <laughs> um, all right. So um, I think this kind of goes along with um, the question earlier about the NOFO. And um, so maybe Kat can answer this. Um, when will more information about the digital equity tribal program be available? Um, okay. Um, so unfortunately, due to the overwhelming interest, we are still working through that application process. However, in the meantime, we would encourage you to also connect with the state broadband office to become involved in um, the state's digital equity planning efforts, especially um, since tribes are considered to be eligible subgrantees. Um, should you need an introduction, please reach out to your federal program officer uh, to assist you in making that connection. Great. Wonderful. Um, let me see here. Um, this one might be one a little bit more general to the to our panelists here. So maybe one of you all can uh, uh, grab it if you feel so inclined to. But if your organizations can support states with planning, how can you make uh, contact with the state representatives? And I believe, Rochelle, you did talk about this a little bit in your presentation. Yeah, so on our Internet for All map, which I, we can drop the link in the chat in a second, um, you can find the names of uh, the state broadband offices for each of the states and contact information. 
um, as well as the federal program officer on NTIA side who's supporting that state. And that's the easiest way to get in contact uh, with the state broadband office. Um, we are encouraging everyone to reach out to the state broadband office. So don't feel like you have to wait for to hear from them. Um, we want this to be a, a collaborative process as much as possible. So don't hesitate to reach out. Great. Um, and then I guess drilling a little bit further into the uh, uh, more the local focus, um, and I, I think a couple of you can talk to this, but um, what are ways that folks can get involved on um, the local level and thinking about local coordination, since that's a big part of these programs, um, how can how can one sort of uh, get involved even, you know, a, at the, the city or county or even community level? Um, so I can sort of kick this question um, off. So one thing I would say is to definitely um, engage community subject matter experts. So what does that mean? So really communicating what does closing the digital divide look like in your specific community, um, sharing models for community digital inclusion programs, you know, including outreach and engagement methods. Um, also representing the perspectives of residents in your community um, would be helpful as well as advocating for programs and policies that impact the communities you serve. Yeah, that's great. Um, all right, next question. Um, might kick it back to Rochelle for a minute. Uh, when should we expect the Digital Equity Act population viewer data to be update, updated with local data? And what level of local data should we expect? Um, is it data on the county level, the census, designated place, municipality, census tracts? So what, what the DE Act population viewer is and what kind of data can we find in there? When can we be expected to, to see that updated? Yeah, of course, that's a great question. Um, so for this one, um, we are expecting uh, the update to come in the first half of this year. Uh, we don't have a specific date to share with you just yet. Um, this map is a, par a partnership with the U.S. Census Bureau, so um, a lot of moving pieces to get this uh, map updated. Right now, if you access the map, it will show um, state-level data for each of the covered populations. So you can see um, information such as those lacking fixed broadband, a uh, population lacking computer or broadband, a uh, population not using the internet and population not using uh, a device. Um, and so you can click on your state and see that information uh, broken out by covered populations, which uh, can be really useful for your digital equity um, planning uh, process. Oh, and then uh, for the update, uh, the level of information, um, it will depend on each of those uh, statistics that you can see um, in the uh, viewer currently, whether they'll be at the county level or at the census tract level, because um, we're using a couple of different sources, which will, it will be clear um, in the update what that will look like. Great. No, thank you. We are, yeah, looking forward to seeing that a little bit later in the year. Um, Okay, so this is a little bit more of a broader question here about um, where we can find um, technical assistance resources um, on, you know, the Broadband USA website or the, the Internet for All um, at ntia.gov. Or no, sorry, that is the email address, uh, the Internet for All uh, website. So maybe, Rochelle, this might be another one for you, or, or maybe if Knowledge Build and Kat um, want to hop in, uh, where do we find the technical assistance resources? Yeah, uh, we'll drop the link in the chat, but if you go to, um, I, I can read it out, uh, broadbandusa.ntia.gov doc.gov, um, you can go to grant programs and click on digital equity. And on that page, we'll list all of the technical assistance resources that we have. Awesome. You gotta love all those uh, federal government websites. <laughs> um, so we haven't heard from Knowledge Build in a bit. So I'm gonna throw one your way. Um, how do you avoid a focus on access to quality broadband services and emphasize uh, the digital equity or digital uh, literacy piece? That's a good question. Um, I think that 
I don't know if you want to avoid the focus on access to quality broadband services. I think that you want to focus on all three of the components. Um, you know, equity is not equal, but it's like a balance. So the high speed affordable internet services will allow people to be able to easily can be able to learn quicker, you know, be able to do banking, telehealth, and all those other components. So I wouldn't say that you want to avoid it, but I do want to say that you want to focus on all three, right? So, you know, highlight them all in some sort of a way that makes any sense. Yeah, no, that's great. Yeah, no, I, I think they do go hand in hand. So I think that's a great, great response. Um, okay, we have a few more questions coming in. Give me a sec. Um, so I think this one is seeking a little bit more clarification on the capacity grant. Um, so the question is, uh, the, the NOFO, the Notice of Funding Opportunity, will go to the states, uh, but not for the actual local entities like uh, counties or, or cities. So just looking for clarification on that. Well, the, I can jump in on that. So the states are the administering entities. They are funded. However, there are sub-grantee opportunities, as well as when it comes to the capacity and competitive, well, specifically competitive grants, then that opens it up for like anchor institutions, nonprofit organizations, and folks that are doing the work. And those both will come out, you know, in about a year or so, right? So we haven't scheduled the date that's what we were speaking to earlier. So there are there are opportunities, there are funding opportunities for anchor institutions, agencies, and community-based organizations. And there's more specifically in the competitive grants, but also working in alignment with the state broadband office, there may be some opportunities under the comp um, capacity grants as well. Great, yeah, no, great distinction between the capacity grant and the competitive grants coming along. So appreciate that. Uh, all right, let's see what else we have here. Um, okay, so throwing it back to Kat here, um, will all states share their training best practices as they evolve? Um, and is a digital literacy inclusion equity skills database for grassroots innovations being planned? Um, I think they're just looking for how we are going to collect uh, best practices and share those best practices and what sort of things we can expect in the future as uh, you know, all of these uh, entities are, are working um, along with these grant programs. Sure, absolutely. So um, to partially answer that, I would say that states can decide if they'd like to share their best practices. Um, it is not a requirement. However, NTIA has focused its attention on creating technical assistance resources and training for the state broadband offices that are inclusive of stakeholders at every level. And we're talking, you know, those who are um, public servants, the private sector, um, those who are community serving uh, with a specific focus on those on the grassroots level. We recognize that it's extremely important to sort of pass the mic to hear from people in the community who are boots on the ground doing this work. And so speaking with them and learning, you know, what sort of problems are they facing, learning about the solutions that are being developed and sort of highlighting the, those folks um, is certainly at the top of our priority here. Yeah, no, that's great. Um, thank you. Uh, all right, checking to see what else we have here. Um, you know, as as you are are watching, um, feel free to you know we're still taking questions. You can submit it in the uh, Q and A box on your Zoom module. But for now, let's let's talk about rural for a minute. So, what are some tips on navigating the rural versus urban divide that naturally happens as we have these equity discussions. Um, rural communities tend to demand focus as unserved populations, but statistically there is a huge divide in equity access in urban areas um, as well that I think people forget about sometimes. So um, how do we sort of navigate those discussions? Well, I'll say that rural inhabitants are one of the eight cover populations, and each state is taking a strategic approach to ensure that they are in connecting all the residents and all, you know, communities to access to high-speed internet services, devices, as well as, I keep forgetting the third one, digital skills. <laughs> um, you know, but to your point, <clears throat> like the cost of a rural mile, like, you know, understanding that there may be one location, there may be one home and a lot of space around it. So I think that there's just, they're trying to identify the strategic 
um, approach to that, which would be different in the urban settings. However, it, it is definitely being um, focused in on considering it's one of our A cover populations. And each day will be different. So there's not one size fits all approach. We'll say that as well. Yeah, isn't that the truth? That's great. Thank you. Um, and Macy, I could chime in as well as uh, from the technical assistance perspective, we're also uh, planning on some resources to address the rural covered population and how to help them best. Um, so I don't have a timeline on that, but look out for that uh, in the future from us. Technical assistance team's always got things exciting uh, cooking up back there. So yeah, definitely looking forward to that. Um, all right, next question. Um, is there a forum where digital equity groups around the country can communicate uh, more horizontally? Um, oh, Knowledgeville, did you want to chime in? Well, I was thinking about DELN. Um, that was one of the things I thought of, but I'm not sure. And could you tell us what uh, DELN is? Oh, good point. <laughs> it's the Digital <laughs> Equity Leaders Network. Mm -hmm. And um, it's a space where um, folks who are involved in digital equity come together to learn best, not best practices, um, you know, models and su successful models and things that are working in their communities. Um, it's it's online. It's like once every other month, if I'm not mistaken. Katarina, you could probably correct me on that. Um, but there's, <laughs> you know, uh, but that, those, that, that's the main one. But also NDIA, I think, has a resource where they have a listserv in which people are communicating constantly back and forth through online questions and answers from locations. And this is not from, this is from a bottom-up approach. It could be a person working at a housing authority to a person working at a large institution. So those are the two that come to mind. Absolutely. And I would just uh, add quickly that the uh, Digital Equity Leaders Network is something that's led by NTIA. And I can uh, share uh, Michelle Morton's, who sort of is the point for that uh, program. Um, I can share her email address in the chat with you all. That would be and great. Then Sorry, Macy, just because the acronyms are so close. And TIA versus NDIA. NDIA is the National Digital Inclusion Alliance. Yes. So definitely, yeah, leverage our resources here at NDIA. I know there are associations, national associations like the National Digital Inclusion Alliance that get together folks who have a shared interest in digital um, equity and literacy. So um yeah, we're we're happy to um, share additional resources. Um, if you all would like to email Michelle, <laughs> that would be great. Um, all right, let's see. All right, I am looking for questions here. I know we talked a little bit about um, how local organizations can get involved in the planning and development of their state's digital equity plan. Uh, let's see. Okay. Uh, yeah, I guess it is worth then asking this one again, um, is would it be possible to get comprehensive contacts, um, of digital equity staff, um, who are, you know, writing these plans or working at the state level to, um, uh, you know, oh, uh, work with the digital equity um, program grants at the state level, I guess is what I was trying to say. But how do I connect with those folks that are working on the digital equity plans at the state level? I can take this one, Macy. Um, so you can go to our Internet for All map um, at internetforall.gov and click on the heading for map. And if you click on the specific state, you'll have contact information for the state broadband office. And that would be your best contact to reach out to connect with the uh, individuals who are writing the digital equity plans in each state. Wonderful. All right. I think we've got to all the questions here. I'm not seeing too many more, uh, really. Um, did answer the focus on, yes, we did. Um, all right, well, I think we can start to wrap up here. Um, so I'm gonna ask my fellow panelists here um, just to go around the horn and, and to cover any last sort of um, 
thoughts that they had based on the questions or based on uh, commonly asked things that they hear from folks on the ground as they're traveling. Um, so what are what are your pieces of advice or things that you want the audience to sort of leave with today? And uh, Rochelle, you're actually right next to me, so I'm going to call on you first. <laughs> Sounds good. Um, I, I think if you access our resource, it'll resources that we've shared with you today, um, you will be on a great path forward um, to do the work in your state um, or to connect with your state broadband offices. Um, I, as the, uh, being part of the technical assistance team, my mind's always geared to towards technical assistance, um, but we don't know what we don't know. So please uh, reach out to the emails that Macy has shared with uh, you to get in touch with us and tell us what you need and how we can support you uh, in this work better. Great. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, definitely utilize the resources. I know the technical assistance team and digital equity teams have worked really hard on putting them together and are working on new stuff all the time. So please visit our, our website, you know, Broadband USA um, and, and the Internet for All website too. I'll, I'll put those in the chat. Um, but uh, Kat, you're on my screen next, so I'm calling you out. <laughs> Sure thing. Um, I would say that this work matters. And so it is not an easy process. We are going to be asking a lot of questions, revisiting certain areas over and over again, because we're in this for the long run. So I would say to definitely engage with lived experts as often as you can. Um, I really want to take this opportunity to encourage folks to reach out folk, to folks who are grassroots and who are every day serving the communities, even if their work may not uh, qualify necessarily as digital equity talk to them, learn about what they're doing and how can you look at it from a digital equity lens. Um, and yeah, use the materials that are provided to sort of help guide you on those things. But uh, we here at NCIA are always here to help support you um, in whatever process you need. Wonderful. All right, Knowledge Build, I think it's your turn. Thank you so much. I want to um, say thank you for this opportunity to share with you all. Um, it's definitely a marathon, not a sprint. Um, we're building five-year plans at right currently, and then we'll be doing implementation. And so I just encourage you to try to be a part of the plan and connect people, as Katarina was saying, to become a part of the plan. Um, and also, you know, like I said, as far as our dates, possibly in a year, right? So, you know, just be on the lookout for those cap capacity and as well as the competitive grant NOFOs coming out, you know, and again, thank you for your hard work and let's just continue to work together to make things happen. Yeah, none of none of the work we do or even, you know, the the work that the states are currently doing could be done without the people who are on this call today. So we appreciate you being engaged and hope you continue to um, engage with us, engage with the folks at the state level, because um, your voices are, uh, you know, important to this whole process. So we thank you for being here. I did drop again in the chat um, a few of the, the webinar links. Uh, I mean, sorry, the uh, website links. So the Broadband USA website where you can find a lot of the technical assistance materials, the Internet for All website if you want to get a just more about um, what the programs are that we have open or the, the programs that are ongoing. Um, great resources there. And then, you know, for any questions um, generally about uh, digital equity issues related to the grants or maybe just generally, you can email digital equity at ncia.gov. Um, that'll be filtered probably directly to the people here at your screen um, and the folks who are working so diligently in the backgrounds. Um, so please use them. That is why we're here. And, uh, but yeah, thank you so much for joining today. We're looking forward to um, getting to know you all and having future uh, webinars on this topic and others uh, related to uh, broadband. So we hope to see you on a future event, uh, but otherwise that wraps us up here. So hope you all have a great day and we will talk to you soon.